Our next free-for-all victim, uh, Mr. Harris, yes. Jim, I think it's appropriate that you come up because Jim Harris is the founder of the Green Party in Canada. He uh, relinquished his leadership to Elizabeth May, what was it, about a year ago? A little and more? six, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is a good opportunity for you to address the sort of political jurisdictional issues that seems to restrict the development. How can we get a green economy and green businesses going if every new development runs into these kinds of roadblocks? This is Jim Harris. Jack. So uh, this is really, it's an honor to be in this pod because I really think this is the can-do pod from all the amazing speakers we've had. And what I want to show is what we can do. The title of a new book I'm writing is called A Crisis is a Terrible Thing to Waste. And, uh, you know, if we're in this crisis, we might as well get some benefit out of it. And starting Monday, there's going to be a column in the National Post on how going green is the best thing ever for the bottom line. Uh, McKinsey and Company did a study on the economic return of energy efficiency, 170 billion a year for 13 years. Two trillion dollars gives an IIR of 17%. To put that into perspective, the stock market only gives 10% over the long term, and real estate investing only gives 16. In other words, energy efficiency gives a better return for the bottom line than the two things we've ever been told give us the best uh, growth in equity. Um, Walmart is going green because they realize it's cheaper to save money than to make it and waste it. And given they work on 3% net returns, the 500 million they're spending on energy efficiency projects with four-year paybacks or better, that's 25% IIR, they'd have to sell 17 billion of more goods to get the same bottom line benefit. So they're going green. You know, 3 billion kilowatt hours a year in North America are spent on escalators, the majority of run, which run 24 by 365. You know, it took GM going bankrupt before they decided to turn the escalators off on evenings and weekends. <laughs> Why did it take bankruptcy before common sense? Now, the point of this section is, we don't need new technology. We're business leaders in this audience. We need to go back to our businesses, to our industries, and relentlessly drive out the inefficiency. We have the most energy inefficient economy in the world. And so this is the bottom line speaking. This is the first uh, pl LEED Platinum certified uh, tower skyscraper saves 10 million gallons a year by collecting rainwater and using gray water. We heard from Maud Barlow, water's a problem. It uses only half the energy of a conventional building, and it produces 70% of it on site, which means they can do cogeneration, meaning you get the benefit of heat while producing electricity, and therefore your utility rate goes up hugely. Waterless urinals. Most women won't have seen these, but, uh, and in fact, most guys won't have, but each one of these saves 150,000 150, liters per year. Now think about the energy to pump the water for you to pee into it, and then for it to be pumped to be treated and back. The cascading uh, savings for simple things. Roy Thompson Hall should only have these. This is what is possible from the average building in Canada on the left to best of class. We can reduce the energy use of our buildings by 85% without changing lifestyle. Now we think the SUV is evil, but um, the, uh, the SUV represents only 3% of CO2 emissions in North America. Buildings represent 50 so how we live in our homes and our businesses, that which we do have control over, we all have to be engaged in. Now here's the growth story. Solar is growing at a compounded annual growth rate of over 40% a year, right? Show me what, in, for a decade, show me what industry has that. Uh, Ian McClellan, Canadian, Arise Technologies, located in Germany, 
because they're building the green collar jobs of the future. They're investing in Sunrise Industries while we're giving Ford or GM rather 10.5 billion and they're only going to have 550 employees by 2014. I mean that's 1.8 million per employee, right? In a company that's going to shed 100,000 jobs this year in North America. So, uh, wind, 30% compounded annual growth rate. Again, we're not creating the sunrise jobs, we're investing in sunset, the tar sands. And so the carbon markets, this is the growth of carbon markets, and it's going to be a $2 trillion market. This is not what we're engaged in in our markets here in Canada. And HSBC went green because it wants to play in the jobs of the future not in the past. Consumers, we're doing this. This one at the bottom really gets me. MBAs are willing to take 14,000 years, uh, uh, less a year to work for a green company. In competing for the talent of the future, we have to appeal to, men, uh, to people's uh, to values as well as wanting jobs. I'm at my time, but I'll leave you with this one. This is standby power. When your dust buster is plugged in and it's off, it's actually drawing power. When your TV is off, it's actually drawing up to 20 watts. In California, standby power was taking more power than all refrigeration in the state. A simple law of requiring you cannot sell an electronic device in this state unless it only consumes 0.5 watts saved them having to build three power plants. In Ontario, we're choosing to build 40 billion of new nuclear power rather than have a standby power law that would eliminate the need to build them in the first place. This is your future. Half our debt in Ontario is due to the last brain dis dead decision. We must get political. Thank you. Thank you. Well done.